This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And good morning. Welcome to our service of worship and praise on this special Sunday. We're going to start our service today with a hymn that we haven't sung before. It's entitled All Praise to Him. It's number 600 in your hymnals. You'll see the words to this hymn and all the other service up on our screens as well. And uh, to introduce that, we'll have uh, Mike Schrader and Julie Tomperty. And Mike will sing the first two verses, and we as a congregation will join them in the third. God bless your worship. to him, the God of light, who formed the mountains by his might. All praise to him who names the stars that sing his fame in skies afar. All praise to him who reigns in love, who guides the galaxies above. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, 
I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of that forgiveness, let us now praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, preserve the congregation of believers with your never failing mercy. Help us avoid whatever is wicked and harmful, and guide us in the way that leads to our salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. We hear how St. Paul wins over St. Peter for the truth of the gospel. Paul writes, When Cephas, that's Peter, when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles, but when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belong to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. 
When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. And this is the word of our Lord. Blessed are they who hear God's word and live by it. Amen. For our gospel reading, we turn to Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 15. Here, Jesus teaches us how to lovingly practice Christian discipline. Jesus says, If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Where, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And this is the gospel of our Lord. We continue with the four verses of If Your Beloved Son, O God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of God's Spirit be with each of you today and forever. Amen. The Word of God for our devotion today is various verses from Joshua chapter 5 and Joshua chapter 6, which we'll go through in our sermon. And so in Jesus' name, God's beloved Son, your beloved Savior, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is true, isn't it, that some things that God asks us to do seem impossible. For example, God commands you and me to live a godly life in this world. And that seems impossible to do, especially in this day and age. I mean, the unholy trinity, the devil, the sinful world, and our sinful flesh have always been with us, but it just seems more and more that the sinful world, with all of its influences, is just getting closer and closer to us. With the internet, with instantaneous communication, we are connected to everybody. And nobody out there seems to be encouraging us to lead a godly life. Everybody seems to be encouraging us to live an ungodly life. Nobody even wants to mention the name Jesus. And that makes it seem impossible for us to live a godly life. And in turn, it makes it seem impossible for a church like ours to keep on encouraging people to lead a godly life. In regard to all this, in God's word to us today, we find, as our theme says, Joshua at Jericho instructs us. And this is what we learn. Some tasks seem impossible. But Jesus does the impossible. And that leads us to see that we still need to listen and obey our Savior. So here is the background to our text. It's the spring of the year, maybe around the year 1406 B.C. And the millions of God's people, the people of Israel, that he has rescued from their slavery in Egypt have now entered the promised land. They have crossed the Jordan River and they are camped near the first city that they are going to encounter in the promised land, the city of Jericho. It would be the first of 30 cities that God commanded them to conquer. And it seemed impossible, an impossible task. Here's why. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. How were they supposed to conquer this city if they had no access to it? And, and more to the point, how were they supposed to conquer this city of Jericho without suffering horrible, intolerable, painful losses? Israel's situation seemed impossible. And so does yours. How are you going to live a godly life when hardly anybody wants to even mention the name Jesus, even whisper the name Jesus these days? How are you going to live a godly life when fewer and fewer and fewer of the people you know regularly go to church? How are you going to live a godly life when you, when you seem to be surrounded by people who curse and people who fornicate and, and people who get intoxicated and people who live lives? Israel's situation seemed impossible. And, and so does that of our congregation, if you think about it. How are we going to serve more and more and more people with the gospel, more and more. That is our goal as a congregation, is it not? 
How are we going to do that when people just aren't having large families like they used to a generation or two ago or when so many people young people are moving away from our area to live somewhere else or when nationally Christianity is losing one percent per year and that's over the past 20 years Israel's situation seemed impossible and so does your souls how are you, or you going to get to heaven when you and I are constantly failing to do what God demands of us? How are we going to get to our promised land, heavenly glory, when we can't go an hour without sinning? How, how are we going to get forgiven when we can't take one single step to make that happen? How are we going to get declared righteous when we've never been righteous? So uh, there are some things, spiritual things, that seem impossible to us. But you know what the Bible says. With God, nothing is impossible. And let's see how that plays out in our text now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Obviously, it's some kind of warrior. So he, he asked the obvious question. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Get this. Neither, the man replied, Spoiler alert, this man is the Lord himself. He doesn't choose sides. He doesn't play favorites with people. He goes on, But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Now, who is the commander of the army of the Lord? That's the Lord himself. And Joshua understood that. Look what we read next. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence, and he asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? And interesting, interestingly, we read, the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And that's exactly what happened, by the way, with Moses on Mount Sinai. Remember that? And I think here, the Lord is telling Joshua, the same Lord that commissioned your master Moses many years ago, well, right now he's commissioning you, Joshua. I am very holy. So holy that where I am and you are, that is also holy. And then he gives Joshua this impossible promise. Take a look. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and all of its fighting men. This task ahead of you, Joshua, seems impossible, but I, the Lord, will accomplish it for you. And of course, that is the way that God's people, the people of Israel, would accomplish the impossible and conquer the city of Jericho. Now, we, we might think that here on in, the Lord would maybe give Joshua some expert, brilliant military advice about how to conquer this city, maybe with some catapults on the south side and a battering ram on the north side and maybe some flaming arrows on the east side and an ambush around uh, Jericho on the west side. But the Lord doesn't do any of that. Here, here's the Lord's brilliant military strategy. March around the city once with all the armed men. And, and what would that do? That would just tire the army out. And moreover, do this for six days. Great. Now your army is six times as tired. More instructions from the Lord. 
have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. The ark, you remember that, that special chest, two and a half feet tall, two and a half feet deep, and maybe four and a half feet wide. It was overlaid by gold. It was overshadowed by golden angels. And it represented the very presence of God to the people. And so having this ark go out in battle was like the Lord was going with the people into battle. On the seventh day, the Lord says, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets, not making music, but signaling for battle. And when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, signaling victory in battle, even before it happened, have the whole army give a loud shout, and then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. And like I said, this is the way that God's people accomplished the impossible and conquered the city of Jericho. And it's so very similar to the way that the Lord does the impossible for you, getting you into heaven. See, you could say that, that heaven is surrounded with big walls like Jericho, and how are we going to get over those walls? How are we going to get into that place? How are we going to scale those forbidding walls? How are we going to claim that inheritance that is ours? Are we going to do it? with the battering ram of our godly lives? Are we going to get into heaven by the catapult of our good works? Are we going to get into heaven by the flaming arrows of our great love for God and others? No, that will never work. Instead, led by our priest, Jesus, with his ark-like presence among us, We simply let out a shout like the people of Israel did. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, forgive me for Jesus' sake. Lord, declare me righteous by the mercy of Christ. Lord, tear down the wall of heaven and let me in because of what Jesus did for me. And that's exactly, by his grace, what God does with no works on our part at all. So there are some tasks that seem impossible, but Jesus has done the impossible for us. We still understand that we need to believe and obey Jesus, and and that's what the people of Israel did at Jericho. Just as the Lord commanded them, they marched around the city one time, six days in a row. Just as God commanded them on the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. And then what happened? When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city, just as God commanded, just as God promised. You, my friends, go and do likewise. What seems impossible to you today To live a godly life in this sinful world. Follow Jesus. Trust Jesus. And do it. With his help, you can shout Jesus' name to others. And why not? There are laws protecting that kind of speech. With his help... You can be maybe the only one in your neighborhood, maybe the only one in your circle of friends, maybe the only one in your family who gets to church regularly. Why not? It makes you delightfully unique. With his help, you can overcome cursing and 
getting intoxicated and fornication and living a lie. And, and not only will that raise you up maybe in the esteem of other people, but it will just feel good serving your Savior that way. And the same thing goes for us as a congregation. What seems impossible, let's accomplish through Christ Jesus. Why can't we be the church that treasures children and brings more and and more of them here to hear the the glorious word of God? Why can't we be the church that, that treasures our community by striving to redeem it through the proclamation of the gospel? Why can't we be the ones to do the hard work of looking our friends in the eye, looking our neighbors in the eye, uh, looking our family members in the eye and telling them, church is not outdated. You need worship. Jesus is not some relic from the past. You need him in your life right now. The message of the Bible is not out of date. You need those scriptures, and I'll be right by your side to help you find them. Not that any of this is going to be very easy. But what better tasks are there to put our shoulders to in this life? After all, we're, we're doing this kind of work for God, who did the impossible for us. He faced the undoable goal of getting into heaven, us miserable transgressors, conceived and, and born in sin. And impossibly, he poured holiness into us, Christ's holiness, so that now we are holy in the eyes of God. Impossibly, he cleaned up our souls by Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. So, heaven is ours. We are holy. Paradise is waiting for us. That means right now we can lead a godly life by the power of Christ. Right now, we can, as a congregation, do what the Lord wants us to do by the wisdom of Christ. And when we face, at the end of our life, that most impossible situation of of death, Then the Lord does one more impossible thing for us. He raises us to glorious life with him forever. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the confession of our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come out. Amen. At this time, we present our offerings to the Lord.
Let us pray. Lord of power and grace, whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are open to their cries, hear the prayers of your people as we come now in thankfulness for the mercies that you pour down on us every day. We thank you for the gifts of your mighty providence. Make us mindful, O Lord, that you have provided us with life and breath and being, and you are the source of our daily bread. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, whom you sent to be the Savior of the world. Grant that we may believe in him with all of our hearts, learning from him the great truths of the kingdom to which he bore faithful witness. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may produce the fruits of righteousness in our lives. May he endow us with unwavering faith that we might always be ready to do your will. Hear, O Lord, our cry for those who are afflicted. Grant them health in body and soul and mind and save them for your mercy's sake. Today, Lord, we rejoice with Crystal Polwick and Mike Pavlovich, who will, were united in marriage yesterday afternoon. We ask you to bless their marriage with self-sacrificing love and steadfast commitment and draw them ever closer to each other and to you day by day. Guide and uphold us during our pilgrimage in this world and bring us all at last to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right, so true. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places Give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that where two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
You may come forward as directed by our ushers for the Lord's Supper. Uh, note that the distribution hymn is Jesus Sinners Does Receive.
This body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen you, and it will preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace as the children of God you are, with your sins forgiven on the way to heaven. We pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We close with Rock of Ages. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Glad to have you with us, with us today, worshiping with us in this second Sunday of September. Uh, I'll get to the church picnic announcements at the end. I'm going to start with some other announcements of things coming up. Uh, next Sunday begins our regular adult Bible class right after the service. We'll be talking about where we stand. You can read about that in your worship folder. On Wednesday, we'll be talking, starting our Wednesday morning Bible class at 10 o'clock. 
Uh, the theme there is Let's Go Camping, based on the Book of Numbers, and you can read more about that too. And uh, then on Saturday, September 23rd, we're going to have a, a men's breakfast Bible class. You can read about that too in your worship folder. It's going to be at 8 a.m. Breakfast will be included, but the one who's hosting that, um, running that here on that morning, would like you to RSVP him. That's Mark Schra or Mike Schrader. So uh, go ahead and read about that. If you plan on coming, then RSVP to Mike. Uh, there... Uh, our, our, the one that we called to be a pastor is still holding that call. As far as I know, he hasn't returned it yet. So I think he's still thinking about it. And, um, I, and he wants to hear from you. He wants to learn more about the ministry at Mount Olive. Uh, and I think there might have been some um, incorrect information about how to contact him. But I verified this, double-checked it twice. Uh, that is his correct email address and his correct phone number. If you would like to text, call or email him. You can write that down uh, during the, the remainder of these announcements. Now, for the church picnic and benefit today, uh, you have several ways to donate to uh, this benefit that we're having for the parents of Carly Beck. Um, you've read or heard that they will incur multiple tens of thousands of dollars out of pocket uh, to cover some medical expenses. We're just trying to put a dent in that today. Um, hopefully we will do a, a real good job of that. And here's how you can donate. You can donate with cash or check um, in the places around the church that are designated for that. There's one here. There's one right before we start eating in the gym there. You can find another place to donate. Um, and if you didn't bring your cash or checkbook, you can do that at a later date as well. The second place to do that, if you are so inclined, is to... Uh, just um, scan this QR code, the, the codes that you see all over the church that are posted. That will take you right to the, the GoFundMe page for Carly Beck. So we hope that you can do that. Uh, part of the fundraising effort is uh, these silent auction baskets. And re remember with these silent auction baskets, the, the idea is not, oh, I'm going to get a really good deal here. Um, the, the idea is uh, uh, this is a fundraiser for a really worthwhile event. So be generous, I guess is what I'm saying. There are three tables of baskets that are on that side of the church. On this side in the counter, there are four beautiful fall arrangements that are ready for you to take home if you want to bid on them. Um, after a while, um, we'll take all of the baskets and the, and the arrangements down in the gym and they'll be on display there. Also down in the gym are all the um, different door prizes that we'll be having. You can take a look at those too. We sure hope that you're going to spend some time with us after church uh, for that uh, silent auction benefit and for the church picnic itself. Um, I got to smell the chicken uh, before the service started and it was really smelling good. Uh, Joe's... Um, barbecued chicken legs. You're going to enjoy that and uh, the dishes that you brought as well. All of that's going to get underway at 11 o'clock. We'll pray down in the gym. Uh, there'll be tables in the gym and if you'd like to sit outside and eat, there'll be some tables outside to eat. You can read all about the different activities that are going to take place as well. I'll just alert you to one of them. I'm sure that many of you in the past have thought, oh, that pastor is all wet. Well, now you'll have a chance to prove it by putting him in the dunk tank. Um, three throws for a dollar. How much do you want to show that your pastor is all wet? Well, um, it goes for a great cause. And there'll be other dunkies as well. Maybe you'll want to do that too. Um, I think I've got it 